Hello, everyone. Here I am, Lili Tedi. I'm from. We are based in Brazil. I'm here with Graça Bueno, and uh, we are very happy and honored to be here with you guys. We would like to thank you, Lee Edelcourt. Thank you, Ragna, to be part of the New York Textile Month. Uh, it's a honor to be here. I represent Lee Edelcourt, and I'm uh, editor in chief of Bloom Magazine here in Brazil. We developed three blooms in Brazil, and uh, it's very interesting for us to be here and see the history of the tapestry, Brazilian tapestry, because uh, one of our main goals in the bloom is to talk about the emancipation of the southern hemisphere, and we are always uh, decoding and looking for our inspirations, our culture, our colors and the fauna and flora to motivate our talents to make things that look more like our roots. So when we look for the Brazilian tapestry, we see that uh, is already emancipated since the beginning, since the 1950, and Graça is gonna tell us because she is the master of the Brazilian tapestry, so she's gonna teach us a lot. Welcome, Graça. I'm really Thank happy you, to Lili. be here with Hello, you. Hello, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Thanks, Lili, for the invitation. Congratulations, uh, Leo Ducot, for the event in New York Textile Month. We're very much pleased to be here. Our gallery was founded in, in 2002, and we work uh, with the mission of uh, rescue, to rescue the memory of Brazilian modern uh, tapestry as an artistic work. Sometimes it's considered only design, but we work very much with the historical archives, with the family authors, with museums, other institutions. And we are very happy to show here uh, today's part of our work uh, collection. And in the back, we have a wonderful work abstract by uh, Roberto Bulle Marx. He was, uh, as everyone knows, a great landscaper considered uh, the first uh, modern Brazilian landscaper, but architect, artist, and he was also enchanted by the media tapestry. So he uh, decided to make some of his artworks uh, into tapestry. And uh, he executed in several ateliers in Brazil and also abroad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the document with you guys so you can see all the images and uh, Graça is gonna explain to us uh, the main uh, projects, the main tapestries that we see here. And uh, if you guys have any question, you can please send it to us uh, and we are gonna do our best to answer. Uh, hopefully we have time because we have a lot of uh, image to show and we are really anxious to show all the information because it's a, no, a lot of nice things for you guys to see but please ask and we are gonna uh, answer this later let me see uh, i'm gonna try to share the document here it's always a little bit tricky but yeah i think i can do it <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. so we are showing since august uh, an exhibition called Woven art and design that we have opened uh, at the SP Art Fair virtually and physically at the gallery. And on the window, we we have uh, silver palmer tapestries. This is a very beautiful gallery based in São Paulo. Okay. In uh, in, in this uh, invitation, there is piece of this Bula Max uh, tapestry, the Super Palm, designed by Tinheiro and Cida Santana that has founded the gallery, Passado Composed. And the last one is a lamp of your mother, right? It's a lamp of my mother, in crystal, yeah. rock crystal. Yeah, she, she makes uh, wonderful lamps, beautiful ones. Thank you. So Silvio Palma, shown on our window, he, we're doing lots of uh, research about him. But uh, among the other artists that we're going to show, they were together in some moment in a museum exhibitions such as FAP. It was one of the most important exhibitions of Brazilian modern tapestry in 1974. This is a detail. You can see the one that is in the window with a lush vegetation, very figurative, very colorful, very attractive, and made in uh, embroidery in the Kilim technique. He didn't have his atelier, so 
uh, for embroidery. He sent some to be made in Recife and so on. Some other states of Brazil. Pernambuco. Another one. Is a very colorful. Very colorful, very attractive. It's right in our window at the moment. And Roberto Gulemax, as we have talked before here in the back, he was also very good friends of Gennaro de Carvalho. Gennaro was one of the precursor of a Brazilian modern tapestry, even though Regina Graz was doing tapestry in the 20s. Uh, he was considered one of the, the first ones. And they were friends. Uh, this is a picture from 1966, coincidentally the same date as the tapestry here in our back with an abstract theme. Just to give you a dimension uh, of the work that is set in the gallery with some Furniture designed by Oscar Niemeyer, Joaquim Terreiro, Jorge Alzupin. Yeah, and it's where we are sitting now. <laughs> where we are sitting now. <laughs> a beautiful tapestry. Made in a loom, hand Amazing. loom, in São José dos Campos, uh, by the ITM Atelier. Uh, we have launched many exhibitions. One of the first, uh, most important ones, it was the Artists of Modern Tapestry that we have focused on Gennaro de Carvalho, Jacques Duchet, and Jean Gillon. We have invited a curator from Bahia, Alejandro Munoz, and showed some uh, archives. Uh, here you can see Gennaro de Carvalho, born in Bahia, uh, on the pictures when he was 20 years old, uh, in his 20s, uh, in front of a mural. Uh, taken, the picture was taken by Pierre Verger. Uh, he was first a muralist painter. In 54, he met Jean Lourçat, the French artist uh, that re has renovated the European and international tapestry. Uh, and in 50, he was not doing tapestry at this time, but uh, he told uh, Lourçat, yes, he was doing in the beginning, but in 55, he started making exhibitions. And Nair Carvalho, his muse, his wife, uh, his wife uh, now his widow, has helped him a lot in the atelier. She's still alive. She's still alive. And uh, the first, uh, uh, this was one of the first tapestries by him. They were needlepoint, embroidery, and they have several teams, this circus. In the picture, in this archive picture, he's together with Chichilo Matarazzo, the founder of Museum of Modern Art in Sao Paulo. It was the year 57, 1957. He was already very much famous and considered. And he was in the show at the Museum of Modern Art in Sao Paulo. At the same year that the Bayern of Sao Paulo had invited um, the French artists Jean Lourçat, Jean Picard Ledoux, Le Corbusier, and among others, showing tapestry. Okay. It's a beautiful theme by Gennaro uh, with vegetations, one of the first ones from the 56. Uh, he is famous about the colors and the inspirations of tropical image, right? Exactly, and there he's showing this little cat. Uh, Very cute. And just to show the dimension that the atelier has grown so much, and in, in around 1960, he had a, a 120 workers uh, in Brothers Women, uh, 30 they were at the atelier and the others they were in their homes with the, they were wives of fishermen. And uh, he became very successful international, internationally and David Rockefeller, the founder of MoMA, as you might know, <laughs> has visited his atelier in 63 with his family and friends. And uh, on the wall, in this archive photo, you can see the studies. So Janari used to paint the studies. And uh, then he could do the tapestry in the dimension of the client. And also he would do uh, small ones anyway in the atelier. And you could eventually order a bigger one. Also because he starts his life as a painter, right? He starts his life as a painter. He was very much considered as well. He has even participated in the Bayern of São Paulo as a painter. This is a magnificent work. You can see the black outlines very much influenced by Fernand Leger. Gennaro has won a, a, a study, a bolsa, uh, to study in France uh, with Fernand Leger, uh, André Lotte, in 1949. 
this is one of the stickers that he used to, to put behind his uh, his works. You can see from closer here the needle point or petit point, the embroidery, and the outlines on the figures was a, uh, a creation of the widow to outline better the figures on. Oh, you mean the outline of the even the green has an outline. Yes. Oh, nice, beautiful. Magnificent work that we have shown here. Very tropical, also with some dry uh, vegetation. And uh, even though very tropical, you can see the vegetation. He has a, a graphic uh, design, drawing, drawing, drawing. drawing. Yeah. drawing. But uh, it's incredible tropical. Very tropical, very much inspired by, by the fauna and flora, very Brazilian. And uh, in some of his stuff, he has also uh, done with the design of architecture, the colonial architecture of Bahia. Here in this uh, Canteiro da Varanda, which is a garden in your know, veranda, you can see also some graphic designs from uh, popular uh, uh, motifs. motifs from Bahia. Also really happy. Very happy. <laughs> Very good in colors. Yes, it's wonderful. And two similar ones with the same theme, vegetation and dried. Uh, so he believed that even though the dry vegetation would come back with, again, with flowers and So he was the pioneer, uh, the first one to start and a very important one. And he made a lot of work, right? A lot of work, even though he had a short career, he died before 45 years old. And uh, this is an archive photo with an exhibition of an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in Bahia that Lina Bobati uh, has founded and invited him. He was one of the most important artists that shown. You see a different scenography, uh, the tapestry was on the cover of oh, a curtain. curtain. And so we, we've been inspired and made an exhibition with the same uh, scenography at Maj. Another one, uh, I was just talking with Graça because I think this is very different. Uh, it seems like it has two images in one, only one. Uh, the black is on top of it, like uh, uh, it's not doing the shape of the design, but it's uh, reshaping it. Yes, exactly. And he did the same uh, with fashion fabrics that he has designed uh, with a superposition. Yeah, like a collage. Like a collage. You see, wonderful. He also shows some fruits, but cut fruits, imaginary fruits. Uh, and uh, he's the artist's view. They're very. Now here is a little bit different. Uh, less figurative. Yeah, becoming more abstract. And this is a series, uh, belongs to the series that of the, the birds and also uh, sometimes few birds or one bird. He was very romantic. He said he was a lonely bird before he met his wife, uh, his second wife, Nair. It was his muse. You can see the similarity and the inspiration by Jean Lursat's works because Jean Lursat, he, he used to love the, the symbol, the sun. Uh, and here the sun is almost like a sunflower uh, mixed with uh, geometric motifs uh, on the birds and, and vegetation and this bird flying away, Beautiful. lonely looking for his love. <laughs> And so, you see, he used to use the same theme with different colors and in different ways. Yeah, they're very attractive. Colors. One of those we have. So we are exporting again. Uh, Gennaro, when he was alive, he used to make shows abroad in the US and Europe and so, and he sold very well. And now again, we are exporting some of his work. Yeah, this one is in the gallery, right? It's in the, the gallery now. Just in that wall. Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful, incredible. <laughs> Very nice when you see it like this and surrounding. Yes, with the furniture set as well. 
Yeah. Yeah, also because the gallery, you restart the gallery with furniture, right? And yes. right after you fall in love with the tapestry and you became like a master of the tapestry. But yes. the beginning was more uh, for the furniture, more the furniture. modernist furniture. Okay. You see the sunflower, how beautiful. Yes, it's incredible. And uh, we have exported this uh, to a partner that we work very well in London, Maris Cantiers. And uh, she, she got, uh, she was very pleased when the World of Interest was interested to make the cover page of this. It's a beautiful cover this page. Magazine. You see variations of the sunflower with the red. Uh, and two different sizes. Two different sizes. One a little bit more baroque. Mm -hmm. Here you can see more butterflies. Cute. Sunflowers again very geometric yeah all needle point all embroidery by hand the sun the sun the flowers and birds and you butterflies. see the butterflies again the detail this is a wonderful one it was a magnificent big piece we have shown in one of our exhibitions here okay Let's see almost abstract vegetation but Going to have this you see that it's changing the, yes. his work, right? You see, he believed that the nature, even though burned from the act, act, uh, agricultural method uh, in Brazil, it would come back uh, with new flowers. And so, more, so a big variation of this theme. This was a huge one that he made under uh, command in 1968 for Adolfo Blocchi. It was from Manchete Editors. And we have shown it at Espiati with an exhibition with the same um, nomadic morals. It was a, um, a title that Le Corbusier made to, has given to the tapestries because he considered that the tapestry was like morals that he could change to any place so if you moved uh, so you could carry it out with you and it's huge it was a huge piece it was a huge piece very nice had uh, also some pieces of wood it was those are the tales of the piece yes very beautiful one very beautiful also. one and he here he you can see some animals some figurative and Birds and so, so Gennaro, uh, he developed a relationship, a long relationship with Jean Lussard. Jean Lussard has founded the Biennale de Tapisserie de Lausanne or International Tapestry of Lausanne. And in 65, he sh has shown there one of his works uh, inspired by, by the butterflies and uh, the blue moon. So in this archive photo, you can see a bigger size of the, the tapestry the smaller one on the right. And in the center is the CAD model. So he always used to do this, uh, use paint and then embroidery. And you also carry the, the studies here in yes. the gallery. You yes. have all the paints. This is a beautiful one that is now in Paris with a dear client. You see how uh, it's very much Fernand Léger inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. This, I, I consider this the last uh, tapestry that he has made in 1971. The and butterflies are gorgeous there and the vegetation. And he died so, in, in, this year. He, he died at the 1971. Uh, just to show that the fashion uh, business was very much interested in what Gennaro was doing. And Verushka, the famous uh, German model, has visited him in 1968. He was at this time making uh, more portraits and more female figures. You see a beautiful mermaid uh, from Bahia, mermaid from Bahia. <laughs> Very cute, beautiful. And beautiful uh, washing ladies going to, to work in the river to wash the, the clothes. The clothes. Uh, this is a rare piece that he made on a loom because uh, on a hand loom 
you can see in the next picture uh, the details uh, is called white butterfly the painting of this work is at the, it belongs to the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in Sao Paulo. And this piece has been shown at the Museum of Modern Art in Sao Paulo in 1969 during the Panorama. Yeah, you can see the handloom archives on the right. Yeah. And Nair de Carvalho has organized the, sorry, not only the, the embroideries, but also this handloom. Uh, Jacques Duché is the second most important artist together with Norbert Nicola. They have founded an atelier. They were painter. Uh, they were uh, they were disciple of uh, Sanson Flexo. Sanson Flexo founded the atelier abstraction in Brazil. Uh, but as the tapestry was the great trend, they decided to make ta tapestry and traveled to, to France and, uh, and got some handlooms from Regina Grass, one of the pioneers in Brazil, uh, using handloom, and started the Atelier de Chenicola in 1959. Here's when we met Duché in 2011, we were introduced to him by Antonio Carlos Sucer Abidal, and he has collaborated with the exhibition that we made in 2012 when he unfortunately died for the opening. This is one of the first works. So the first, uh, the, we're talking about uh, for the moment flat tapestry. So the right beginning, this is one of the first uh, one by Duché in 1961. You can see he was very much abstract, uh, concrete, rational in his color were not so bright as Janad. More quiet. More quiet. <laughs> this is a wall that uh, we, we made for the exhibition Artists of Modern Tapestry in 2002. 2012, sorry. I uh, love this one. This is beautiful called The Barco, the Ship. Of Happiness. Of Happiness. <laughs> very nice, so that title. It is very nice. You can see the graphic design in the how it's different. This is called the tree, Arvore. And also very geometric, very, very geometric. Straight lines. Mm -hmm. Even vegetation, you can see how it's, it's abstract. abstract. Yes. We are showing the titles because the Duchesse's work always had this stamp. With the title in With the, the back. With the title in the back. The flowers. You see how the flower has some lines in the middle. And yeah. They were very thin uh, tapestries uh, in the beginning. This is a beautiful uh, Venetian party. And here's a picture of the shape of, of an exhibition at the Pinacoteca São Paulo in 2003 Beautiful that Abdala place. has made the curatorship and he was very happy to see lots of uh, his, his work, work shown from the flat until the sculpture we are going to see soon. Yeah, in a very nice place. Piece. This is a picture taken by uh, Rui Teixeira for his book uh, together with Jaime Vargas, the Zendotopia. Uh, a huge tapestry by Duché that he was made under command by a bank that we have shown at the SPR last year. Huge, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Called developments, uh, I see flowers, geometric flowers, made on the handloom because they had a big, a big handloom. So here is the stamp. The stamp. The signature in front. Once again, the same show as Piatti, uh, on the left, a work by Nicole, on the right, by Duché. So they had uh, the same atelier, atelier. And they were distinct painters. But here they combine completely. Yes, this. it has still a similarity. Uh, later on, we are going to see how Duché and Nicole works are, are very different. This uh, one vortice still in the gallery has participated in many museum exhibitions. We have track of everything through the archives. 
Aguapé, this uh, it's uh, Aguapé is a plant uh, on the river. Yeah. Brazilian has also participated in the same exhibition as the previous one that we have shown by Janaro at Museum of Modern Art in 1969. This is the beginning of uh, the, the woven tradition. forms and the, the going to sculptures, it's starting the tra three dimensional works. You can see uh, this archive photo uh, of uh, the, the exhibition at, uh, at the Biennale of São Paulo in a special room in 1971. So now we already see here uh, spaces that are um, empty, right? Exactly. Once again, this is the very beginning of the woven forms, 1973. So he's experimenting. He's experimenting and moving. And by 1975, he was very well known by his sculpture pieces that could be standing hanging from the, the ceiling. And we decided to make uh, an exhibition and put Jacques Touche's work, sculpture pieces in the window, in this way, hanging from the ceiling. So here show. now is already a, a tridimensional. Tridimensional. Yeah. And by this time in 1984, he had already closed the atelier together with uh, Nicola, but he was still working by himself. It's an archive photo from 82 in a beautiful orange tapestry from 86 another one very sculptural beautiful and here's a, it's, a, it's a show at the museum uh, that the, the, the same museum that has made one of the first uh, most important exhibitions in 1974 they have inherited or uh, a big collection from Duché, as well as Ma got in other museums, but Fapi uh, made this big exhibition in 2008 in talking about color without end, uh, but mainly with Jacques Duché. Beautiful an homage tapestries. To him. An homage, yes. Now we start with Norberto Nicola, the partner of uh, the, uh, Duché, Duché in the atelier. They have found it together. The, uh, this archive photo on the left is from the first tapestries, very plain. No on the right, very sculptural. Very sculptural. Okay. Uh, this was a beautiful tapestry. You were going to say something before? Did no, 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 my, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> so much to say. Uh, but this was one of the first by Nicola, Dajo Luminoso, 1960. You can see the stamp too. This was a beautiful video that maybe you can see he uh, his influenced by the indigenous uh, art. We shall not forget that uh, the Indian were doing uh, tapestry fabrics and in feather uh, items, beautiful, and Norberto Nicola was very much inspired and he has organized himself the most important indigenous art exhibition in the 80s. Nice. Uh, you see this germination, the, the vegetation. Yeah. This is one of, uh, of the important tapas they has made called Baroque. It has participated in the Biennale of Sao Paulo in 1965. Nicola was very much active at uh, the Biennale and he also has influenced uh, them to consider the tapestry as a, a visual art, not only applied arts. And the same year, Magdalena Bakanovitz was showing uh, her tapestries. We are going to show late, later on. This was beautiful, Baroque. Beautiful. He has a Baroque, uh, it's still, but even Baroque modern. <laughs> yeah, but it's Baroque. Yeah, it is Baroque. Beautiful. You see the it. black outline too here. It's a beautiful picture of the two tapers again by Rui Teixeira Oops. at the gallery. Oops, sorry. No, a closer. 
of H1. Yes, master zoo is another one. Floral. A very geometric, uh, standard. Oh, it's very different from the rest. Very different from the rest, very minimalist. Yeah. This book was organized by Denise Matad. It's a wonderful book about Nicola's work. And this separate on the right is published there. We wanted to show. And it's already tridimensional. Yeah. Already tridimensional. And this separate has been shown in an exhibition later on. We're going to see in Washington, 1971. Uh, it was a big success at the Gallery of Organization of American States, Washington. Nice. This was the window uh, in homage of Nicola that we have invited Rodrigo Bueno, a contemporary artist. Rodrigo to... Bueno is uh, Graça's brother. He is a very nice artist, very important one. He won some prizes that Graça can explain to yeah, us. He has just won the Camargo Vilasa prize last year among uh, four other people. There were five artists. And he has been also at the bloom, the first bloom that we made in Brazil, the bloom douches. Uh, and uh, he works very much with the nature, with the fauna and flora, and uh, he is inspired by that. His atelier is called Mata Dentro, uh, inside forest or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and the endocot is very much fond of his work too. Yeah, so he's a very nice guy for you guys to follow him. Thank you. This is a Nicola work that is the beginning of going to sculpture tool. You can see here uh, archive photos of a wonderful exhibition uh, of their sculpture pieces, first sculpture pieces in at Maspi. Must be Avenida Paulista. Yeah. This uh, work, Corda Vermelha Red card has been at this exhibition. Love this one. This is a wonderful work, a later one by Nicole, was cover page of an important Brazilian book. And we have uh, sold this to Europe. Uh, it's incredible how the foreign eye appreciates sometimes uh, even more the Brazilian artworks. And how, what do you say about this chair that uh, also has a textile on it? Yes, this chair was one of the first ones. Uh, it was shown in an exhibition at Maspi too, in the 70s. Uh, they have invited artists to make design. Uh, so he made a tapestry on a chair. So artists- it's from made, him as well. From him too. Oh, great. It's shown now at another exhibition by a friend of ours. It's very nice. Very nice. This is the Atelier du Genicola that uh, when they separated, this is stayed with Norberto Nicola at Alameda Glecci. And uh, you can see in the next picture that this atelier was opened in 1964 for artists, visual artists, Brazilians, that were not uh, tapestry makers, but they they had to follow the trend and asked the atelier to make some of uh, some tapestry of their artworks. Uh, here you can see many famous ones, Bonadé, De La Monica, de uh, We are going to see a picture, uh, the follow one by Fernando Lemos. Fernando Lemos was a Portuguese born artist. He, made, he was very famous for his photographies. Uh, but he was a painter too. He made tapestry at Atelier de Chenicola and in Portugal mm. too. Here we come to Jean Gelon. Jean Gelon, we are passionate about Jean Gelon. We work very much with the family. And uh, he, he was born in Romania, but arrived in Brazil in 56. And he was Brazilian. He considered himself Brazilian. He's most known for his furniture design. He was an architect, an interior designer and so and, uh, he exported in the 60s for 22 countries. And here's a picture, archive picture of a, a fair in Germany with his iconic chair. And in the back, you can see the tapestries. 
And he decided making tapestries because he was doing lots of five star hotels and had lots of demand, was the trend of tapestry. And uh, he was very good friends of Gennaro. He asked Gennaro, let's do some tapestry from hotels and Gennaro, do yourself. You're a great painter. You can create your atelier with Edith, his wife. And he started doing tapestry in the 60s, like this. This is the one, the first show that we have shown tapestry in 2009 with the help of Adelia Borges. We made the exhibition Forever Modern. This tapestry exceptionally is made on a hand loom. Most of Jean Gelon's tapestry are also embroidery in needlepoint. This one was made in France. He used to travel a lot and he has uh, given the study to this atelier in Aubusson. This is a beautiful wall of uh, some of his mm -hmm. works in our exhibition, Artists of Modern Tapestry in 2012. A closer look at his Very several themes, birds and beautiful. Yeah. Uh, abstract, organic works. Beautiful colors. Beautiful the colors. The harmony is just wonderful some fruits. This is one of the first ones. More tropical. More tropical. Organic. This is, I guess, it was from the 80s. This is wonderful work. We have the study too. There's a window of uh, another exhibition we made it was a kind of retrospective about Jean Gelon's work called Sailing with Jean Gelon. Sailing. Why? Because of his iconic uh, chair sure. that is inspired by a raft, a boat uh, that he saw in the Northeast. We have invited the curator Enoc Sacramento. Uh, he's a wonderful critic and uh, very good friends, was very good friends of Jean Gelon. Some abstract words, beautiful. Yeah. You see closer the window here with the raft chair. And the chair, the, the famous chair, chair. The famous chair. Raft chair, right? The name. Yes. It's a, uh, an American book that uh, about Brazilian design, but has made also an honor about uh, his tapestry with his furniture and objects. Wonderful butterfly to get the abstract. Yes. Theme. Beautiful one. The tapestry are very attractive, uh, very colorful. Yeah, and it's beautiful, those two together. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. This was made uh, once again in France, and coincidentally, we have exported to France to some dear friends. Some organic works. Yeah. The brown, yeah. red. So beautiful, so much to see <laughs> by Jean Gelon. And uh, just to remind that he was very much international too. And he made an exhibition at the Waldorf Astoria in 1973 together with H. Stern jewelry. Uh, so some, you might find some of Jean Gelon's tapestry in New York, if you're lucky. <laughs> Is still there in Waldorf Astoria? No, no, no. It was no, just a temporary exhibition. exhibition. I mean, but some people have, some. Have, might have bought, and okay. you may be lucky to sure. to find so, it. Okay. So these were the huge ones that he made for a five-star hotel in São Paulo in the eighties, in a different technique, tufting. You see a little bit more of relief. Relief. You see, mm -hmm. fruits at the same time. Plants are very organic. Uh, he has a personality. Now we are going to show Ruben Dario. He was considered the magic of colors. He had a short career, died very young too, born in Rio, but with uh, a family from Minas Gerais with lots of tradition in, in to embroidery. He was a wonderful painter, but he did not have his atelier. So he sent his uh, tapestry to be made. His, studies to be made at some ateliers. One uh, uh, was a social social atelier at the prison in Bangu, Rio de Janeiro. This was a huge, huge, huge work. 
that it was also uh, published by Rui Teixeira and Jaime Vargas in the Desenho da Utopia book. Again, uh, Rubens Dario work in our window. Uh, in fact, it was a, we made an honor in the invitation. This was the one. You can see he is embroidery, but another a point called the Brasileirinho, Little Brazilian, uh, created by Madeleine Colasso. She was um, also an artist uh, that lived in Brazil, and she has registered this name of this point in Lausanne. It is a, it's a, a variation of the Ahaiolo point. These are wonderful studies. studies that came from the family of Ruben Dario mm -hmm. in our exhibition. A wonderful wall. Beautiful. These different tapestries they're going to see now, the details. Yeah, the geometric theme inspired by machines, he used to say. Beautiful reds. The harmony of reds here is just wonderful. Very unique. This is the, the beginning of Rubin Dario with lots of vegetation. Wow. Happy one. Very magical colors. It's beautiful. Yeah, so, so bright colors that we decided at this SPR show to paint the wall green. Um, in honor of uh, his green and orange, you see the black line too. His, his teacher, Frank Schaff, uh, has studied with Gennaro, with Fernand Leger. So these contemporary artists were also influenced by Fernand Leger work. But at the same time, they were influenced by the same artists, they were unique. This has been that real personality, this explosion of organic uh, geom geometric of fruits. Uh, yes, this piece is magical. It's beautiful. It's, beautiful. it's here. Love See it. the bright colors are wonderful. He was, this is, was one of the ateliers, the social ones in the prison. There's to show that on the left side that he was showing the workers how to do it. So it was, uh, this is something that we talk a lot now to do a social work and uh, he used to do a very long yes. time ago. This was very nice. You were pioneer. Let's wish it happens again. <laughs> yeah. So well organized as it was. One of his last works, very figurative, This is beautiful. He, he said he would fly to the moon and all of a sudden he died. It was his last uh, tapestry. And this was made in another atelier called Artesanato Guanabara. You're going to see these ladies. They have founded this Artesanato almost at the same time as the, the prison one. And they were very organized. They were artists too, but they invited many artists to to make their tapestry. You're going to see a few examples now by Alfredo Volpi. Volpi uh, was a very important artist, uh, painter in Brazil, and he used to do abstract flags uh, and uh, houses, facade houses, and with a lot of colors. And uh, so he did this, you said it's inspired in a boat, right? Yes, this is inspired by the boat master. We had shown this at the SPR show in 2018, together with the authorization. This is another one that is published in a, an old Brazilian book about tapestry. From Volpi also. From Volpi to Alfredo Volpi too. Here's a show that we did in 2012 with the help of Abdallah, to, no sorry, 2017. And we uh, have shown also works by Edmar, we're going to see. Edmar de Almeida, he's still alive. He's in Uberlândia, Minas Gerais. 
uh, and he did uh, lots of uh, tapestry with religious theme and uh, he works with uh, ladies that make uh, fabrics on loom uh, and he was very good friends of with Lina Bobadi and he, she had invited him to make this show at MASP in 1975 and uh, this was a later work by him very tri-dimensional with horse hair that we showed in an exhibition here in 2018. Eva Sauvage is a contemporary artist and textile uh, artist. She makes fabrics too. We had shown her works uh, several times. She has won a prize in 1971, 1979 at the Museum of Modern Art. She was also contemporary with the other artists. She's, she's been at the, the, the famous exhibition 1974 and the three of Man as well. Here's Hato Dibi, a dear friend and a contemporary artist. He makes textile uh, fabrics. Uh, and that, this patchwork? patchwork, a patchwork. Almost a collage. But it's Almost a, a collage. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Just to remind that uh, Magdalena Bakanovic, the second uh, renovator of tapestry, she has shown her work in 65 at the Biennale São Paulo and she won the gold medal prize and has influenced all the Brazilian and international artists. You can see in the next picture, one of the works, Helena. And it's very interesting because she was an artist that she didn't uh, ask other people to make. She made herself and she used many techniques in the same work. It was a handloom, crochet, um, embroidery, everything, and lots of horse hair, and whatever she found, because Poland was uh, was very poor at this time. And she succeeded. She she died recently. Considered one of the most important uh, sculptured artists. So it's beyond craft. Her work. We had shown her work uh, in 2017. And we've been invited to write a chapter on his, her retrospective book published by the Museum of Textile in Lodz, Wuch. <laughs> Another artist, Jagoda Buick International, she's been to Brazil several times personally, and she won the most important prize of, uh, that uh, uh, an artist of tapestry can receive. The, grand, the big premium of 1975, the Biennale São Paulo. She was very close uh, to Duché and Nicola. Nicola uh, visited also Magdalena Bakanovic. They were very connected with the international trend <laughs> of tapestry. So this is uh, the presentation that uh, we wanted to show to you guys. Uh, I lost my mouse here. Um, we are now here. If somebody has any question, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Let's see. It seems like it has some... Uh, uh, how can we see virtual exhibition? Oh, you can go to the website yeah. of Passado yeah. Composto and see the exhibition that is going on here. Uh, I also could make a film later of this uh, talk and uh, sent to Ragnar to New York Textile Month. I don't and know if there is a link. channel at the YouTube, YouTube, Passado Compost to YouTube, Passado Compost to YouTube. Let me see if I can write it just down. The YouTube. Uh, if you want to know the price of Renato uh, that is in the gallery now, uh, you can write us. Uh, contact with Grasa. An email. Can you write the email? Let me see how I can write it here. Answer, answer live. Answer live. Uh, Lorena. Where do I answer now? Ah, answers. No. Oops. At our email. At our email. How can we see the exhibition? How would you like to answer this question? Well, guys, I'm trying here, but I'm not being able to write it down. Let me see. Hey, Rodrigo Bueno is out watching us. Wonderful, hello. 
uh, Gracia will give a full course on history of tapestry. That's true. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> How is this tapestry work and art in general now under Bolsonaro, you meant? <laughs> Well, yeah, we are not in a very good shape at this moment, but uh, it's been a long while that we've been in a crisis. So we Brazilians, I think since we, our country exists, we've lived in a crisis. Yes. So we are always trying to survive and find a way but out. We can say that uh, besides all the crisis now and the Bolsonaro politics, we we've been very successful uh, during this first virtual exhibition at SPACI. In uh, the question of the gallery now, we are receiving some clients by appointment, but we're doing well. <laughs> we're doing well. Oh, I think now I, I found out how I do. But uh, let's answer this one. How do uh, how does the art market realize the this tenuous line between decorative art and visual art inside the tapestry. Uh, there's lots of prejudice. prejudice. Yeah. Prejudice, uh, some considered only design, but uh, um, we try to explain through archives the importance in, of these pieces as artworks and uh, some people understand it, uh, but uh, few still think they are just decorative items. They are not, they are artworks. And you can, even contemp other contemporary artists such as Beatriz Miliazes that we haven't talked about, uh, she has made tapestry today. So there are many other contemporary artists making tapestry today because Oops. it's very, uh, today fortunately and also Lee of the court and Lili would agree with me. Uh, we, we value more the handmade uh, pieces and uh, it's very nice to, to touch the tapestry and, and to know that it's handmade is even more valuable for me and for some people, I believe. Uh, how do you see the participation of women in the Brazilian tapestry in modern art? As they were the most important people uh, doing the work. And there are few um, women artists, few, few, that we have not mentioned for a question of time. Gilles de Zevedo and some others. But uh, they were mainly workers uh, doing tapestry um, let me see uh, I'm gonna uh, answer in some of, in any question here because uh, I did something wrong Rodrigo Bueno I'm gonna answer him but uh, please uh, everybody see you can see the website is passadocomposto.com.br right right and then you can see the movie of the presentation of the exhibition there yeah. is going on. You can watch and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Somebody is asking you about Vanessa Barragão. Vanessa Barragão, I don't know, sorry. Uh, how does the, uh, I, we already answered this one, right? And uh, somebody asking you a course of uh, history of tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's organize in September like next year in New yeah, York. <laughs> maybe in New York textile month would be great to be there. Right? Monica's our dear friend. Oh, thank you, Monica. It's important gallery, I know. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, well, guys, I think we did uh, show you most of the Graça's work here are wonderful. If you come someday to Sao Paulo, to Brazil, don't hesitate to visit the gallery. Uh, I'm also here in Sao Paulo, would be a pleasure. Uh, New York Textile Month is doing a great job and uh, we are here working hard for doing bloom and emancipation of the southern hemisphere. So, we are always interested in people helping and uh, doing, giving a hand. So it was a pleasure. Let's see. I think 
I think we, we did it, everything. So it was very nice talking to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lily, for the thank invitation. You, thank you, Lily, the court. Hello, everyone in New York. And thanks for everyone to watching us. Hope uh, this you can watch again. Yeah, it's Instagram gonna be on YouTube, on Instagram as well. So it was very nice. We had fun here. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.